So I have a couple products here sent by WattCycle, a 30 amp MPPT charge controller, 12 or 24 volt, and apparently this is a new product that they're carrying. They also sent a battery monitor. So let's look and see what all comes in the package. Looks like we've got the monitor itself. It says 500 amp shunt. Feels pretty heavy duty. A connecting cable, some mounting screws, and another wire here to go to the positive to power the shunt. And I'll show you how we'll set that all up. I want to set them both up together and use them together and just kind of see how they work. All right, let's look in the package here and see what comes with the charge controller. User's manual, a template for mounting, got a remote thermometer for lead acid or AGM batteries, and then the charge controller itself. Watt cycle, 30 amp MPPT, 12 or 24 volt solar charge controller. Got four buttons, I got some lights up here, a readout screen, some connectors on the bottom. This is uh, for your temperature probe, solar array, the battery connections, and then a load connection. And apparently you can take the RS-485 plug in here, and I believe you can daisy chain several of these together if you wanted to set your system up that way. Real heavy duty looking, uh, heat sink on the back which is also part of the mounting. All right, let's get this shunt set up and get this set up and have a look at them and see how they operate. And the battery minus, this goes to the battery and then P minus, this goes to the inverter. This is a 500 amp shunt and it has some monster bolts in there. All right, so we got that set up. Now we're ready to hook it up. So let me give you a tour of my setup. Currently, I've got this Renogy 400 watt portable solar panel parallel with the Renogy 200 panel over there. I've got a breaker on the incoming and that's connected to the array. And then I've got battery cables with the breaker connecting the battery to the charge controller. I've got the meter set up. This is the wire that comes with the monitor and the shunt. And then of course the monitor cable, there's a lot of it and it's plugged into the shunt. I've got the uh, negative coming in from the solar on the outside edge of the shunt. That's on the power side. If you want to measure incoming and outgoing, this is where you need to put the negative to your solar. And then of course just the negative side of the shunt over to the battery and make sure that you have that on the battery side of the shunt. And we got this connected to the uh, Alpha 1500 watt. We'll do a little bit of discharge test so we can see what the meter shows. And you always want to do battery first and then solar. So let's turn on the breaker. So it'll power up the charge controller. Runs through its little power up cycle. And it comes default set to lithium ion, which is what we're using, and 12 volts. So you've got the battery here. 12 volts. This shows the battery voltage 13.1 and it's just a battery connected indicated by the green light over here. That's a pretty bright light. So you can use these two up and down arrow buttons to cycle through the different screens that you can see when, you, when you're uh, looking for information. So here we've got the PV voltage. It's got a picture of a PV ray and there isn't one connected at the moment, so nothing. Battery watt hours, battery amps. 15 is a code for the load, which just means this button will turn it on and turn it off. So if you had that set up to a light, you could turn your lights on and off with that button right there. And there's some different settings. You can set it to come on at dusk and, or set it on a timer. This would be where your error codes would show up if you had one the temperature in Celsius, watt hours on the solar on the PV, amps on the PV, battery percentage, that is not correct so it needs to be cycled full and emptied before it'll actually read properly I believe. And then back to the voltage. And then here is your setup. So you can cycle through the different battery options user mode, lithium is what we want, 12 volt or 24, we'll keep it on 12 volt, and then hold the set button for two seconds to save. 
So now I've got a solar panel set up and it is actually taking power from the PV array, putting it into the battery. So we should be able to cycle through and see some different parameters. 22.7 volts from the array. We're getting, looks like from the solar array, 5.9 amps. Let's look at the battery app here and see what it's showing. So 13.25 on volts, 13.3 on this. 4.1 amps. We're over here, we're at 4, amp, 4 amps. So that's pretty accurate and keeps track of your watt hours that are coming from the solar panel. And amps. So watts and amps there. Huh. Okay, so I want to check the efficiency of this charge controller. This is the breaker for the solar comes in here. So I'll just check right here and we'll get a voltage on the incoming. Let's go with 33 volts on the input. And then we'll put the clamp meter on here and check the amps coming in. 13.1. Okay, let's get a voltage reading. The center input goes to the battery. So that's 14.2 volts going into the battery at the moment. And then we'll check the amps coming out of the uh, charge controller. It's fluctuating a little bit. Let's go with 29.5 amps on the output side of the charge controller. 432.3 watts incoming. 418.9. And then what we'll do is we'll take 418.9, divide that by the input, which is 432. 0.3 and then multiply times 100. That's 96.9% efficient. Wow, that's really good. Ignore the percentage because I need to wait till the battery is topped off and then I can calibrate this to know when the battery is full. We're at 13.7 volts, 27.2 amps, and 374 watts going into the battery from the solar charge controller. Then we can look at some of the stats on the charge controller. Up here, just the battery is illuminated, so it's showing battery info. The solar array is feeding energy into the battery. We're set on the 12 volt setting, and we're sitting at 14.2 volts. This is indicating that the sun is producing power off the array, and the battery is connected. So we can just scroll through the different pages. Here's the solar array, 36.4 volts. We're in boost. Currently we're at 34 degrees Celsius. I believe that's the unit. I do not have the temperature probe connected at the moment. I think this is a cumulative watt hour since I started charging. 27.1 amps coming from the solar array. Over here we're showing 27.5 or so. So that's pretty accurate. So here's the app for the watt cycle mini battery that we're currently charging. 27.48 amps, 27.6.4, and watts 380, 380. It's currently at 72%. When the battery gets full, and I'll show you how to calibrate the uh, battery monitor so that it reads accurate on the percentage. And I was hoping to test the 30 amps max because down here it says max charge current 40 amps. But this is a 30 amp MPPT charge controller. I don't know if this is a misprint or if this is actually a 40 amp solar charge controller. I did send an email off to WattCycle to ask them if I get that information in time, I'll add it in this video and let you know what they said. As you can see where my left thumb is right there, 28 amps is, is about the most I'm able to generate with my current solar array setup and the conditions that I have. Let's look at some of the settings on this meter. So you can press this OK button and hold it down for a couple of seconds. And you'll go into the menu. So you can set your capacity, and I have a 100 amp hour battery, so I've set that to 100 amp hours. If you know the full voltage and the zero or empty voltage, you can enter those two values right there. Then you can have it power off at a certain voltage. You can uh, set alarms if you want an alarm to go off when it gets down to a certain voltage. 
and then you've got this attenuation setting and you can set a percentage in here so as the battery charges and discharges as it gets close to full or empty I think it will actually adjust uh, as the battery starts to get full but I don't fully understand that if you know more information about that you can let us know in the comments if you'd like and then once you get your settings in there you can press this double arrow button once and you'll go back to the main screen this backlight pulsates when it's actually charging the battery as you can see it right now so you can easily tell from across the room if you're actually receiving a charge just by looking at the light when uh, there's no longer a charge like if I turn the solar off I'll just flip the breaker on the solar I think it stays on for 30 seconds or something like that and then it'll go dark or you can use this top button hold it down you can turn the backlight off if you don't want the backlight and then you can use the up and down arrows to adjust the intensity of the light so if it's nighttime maybe you want to tone it down a little bit or if it's daytime maybe you want it on the brightest level okay we've got the battery to a hundred percent you can see here on the app that the charge switch has turned itself off so the BMS has shut it off and now you can come back to your battery monitor screen, press and hold the up arrow, and that will set it to 100%. So now the monitor knows where 100% is, and it reads 100%. Now another option is you can wait till the battery is completely depleted, and then hold the down arrow button for a couple of seconds, and it'll zero out this meter, and then it'll know when it's completely empty. Now that we've got it all zeroed out and the battery is completely full, let's do a little discharge and we'll check out and see what it shows. I do not have the solar connected anymore to the charge controller. I turned off the breaker for the solar panels. So we'll turn on the inverter, 13.5 volts on the battery. Standby on this inverter is about 4 or 5 watts. We'll plug in our light source for the load. And of course now it's showing discharge. So we're pulling 45 amps out of the battery through the inverter, 600 watts. And you can also see here at the 594 watts, it will deplete this 100 amp hour battery in just over two hours. It'd be real handy. You hook that up on your solar system and you can have all of that information. And there's a look at the new Watt Cycle 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller, 12 and 24 volt, along with the Watt Cycle battery monitor and how they can work together. If you want more information, I'll put links for these items in the description. And YouTube has posted a video on the screen that they think you'll enjoy. If you click on that video, I'll meet you over there.